Today, we're going to check out WP Umbrella. Now, WP Umbrella is a comprehensive WordPress management tool designed for freelancers and agencies who oversee multiple WordPress websites. The whole point is it allows you to streamline your maintenance tasks, its security, simplifying client reporting, and those kinds of things, but all from one single intuitive dashboard. But why should you even care and why should you even use a tool like WP Umbrella? Well, the whole point of this is you've got one centralized dashboard that allows you to manage and maintain multiple WordPress websites. If you've only got a handful of sites, it's not the end of the world doing this manually. But when that starts to rack up, you get 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe even hundreds of WordPress websites. We know there's lots of updates rolling out every single day. This allows you to be able to monitor and update those sites in one central location. But it does an awful lot more than just that. It does things like backups. It also has reports generated. This is great if you're working with clients and you want to be notified weekly, monthly, whatever it is of what you've done and the impacts and changes that's made. There's so many different things that these kinds of tools allow you to do. So what I'm going to show you in this video is we've broken down to a couple of different parts. We're going to start off with how to actually set your website up on this. Then we're going to take a look at the actual dashboard itself and some of the features. And I'm going to go over how these would actually work. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail, but enough to help you make an informed decision for yourself. Now, before we go any further, this video is sponsored by WP Umbrella. But as for all of my sponsored content, I'm not going to give you any kind of opinion. I'm going to demonstrate how the tool works, and then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. And if you want to try it out, you can try it out for 14 days with no cost, no credit card, nothing at all. So you can get a good feel for if this is right for you. Link in the description down below. Okay, let's start off with the first point, which is installing the plugin into your actual WordPress website and connecting that up to WP Umbrella. So once you've created your account on WP Umbrella, just go onto the website, your WordPress website that you want to connect to it, go to your plugins and search for WP Umbrella. You'll find there's the plugin, simply install it, activate it, and follow the instructions on how to connect this up to your website. Let's take a look. We'll go to the settings, and from there you can see we can either create an account if you haven't done it already, but because you've already got one, we need to grab the API key. Now this might sound complicated, but it's very, very simple. All you need to do is head over into your new account in WP Umbrella, look at the top and you can see it says API key, click to copy it, job done, go back to your website, pop that API key in, there we go, it tells us this is valid, click on save, and we're now connected, that's how simple it is, couldn't be any easier. And now if we jump back into our WP Umbrella dashboard, you can see there's our new site all added in. So this is the first thing you're going to see. This will show you a list of all of the sites that you have. And you'll notice that everything else that you can do is over on the left-hand side. We'll go through some of these in a moment. So let's take a look at one of our sites. We get this overview. It tells us how fast our site is. So it's going to check to see what our speed scores are like. It tells us if there are any updates any risks we may have, and if there's any issues with the PHP versions and so on that we may be running on our site. Then with the site I've already got created and connected up, you can see I've got reports activated on this, I've got backups, and it tells me when the last backup was actually run, and we can also synchronize the site. So if we've made changes or there's an update or whatever it is, we can force this to synchronize to make sure it's the most up-to-date version. And then you can see this is our new site underneath. So you can tell us we've got one update, zero risks and zero PHP issues. We can also log into our WP admin from here. So if you don't want to have your credentials on file all the time, you can click this and it'll connect you and log you into the dashboard of WordPress for that specific site. Pretty useful. Okay, so let's go and take a look now. Let's expand one of these out and see a bit more information. So now we can see we've got more options on the left-hand side. We've got uptime monitoring, performance monitoring. We've got WordPress management that allows us to see if we've got any updates for plugins, themes, and WordPress core itself, which you can see I've got a couple already. And we can see backups, security, any issues, reports, and so on. We've also got some more information here. It tells us this is currently up to date. It tells us when the domain is set to expire if we've got an SSL certificate on it, and if that's set to expire, and how long ago this was actually checked. And you can see we can monitor this every set period. So we've got from two minutes up to one hour, and we can say where we want to monitor it from, and you can, if you want to, disable or pause the monitoring. Monitoring is super useful because you can get notifications if something happens to a website, it goes offline, whatever the case may be, and also monitor things like your domain expiries and so on. We've got tools that allow us to do that. We can also organize things based upon managing labels. So this one is a client site. So you can set things if you've got personal sites, business sites, client sites, those kinds of things. You can group the content together using this label formation. And it just makes it a little easier to see exactly what's going on. 
If there are any incidents, these will be listed underneath. You can see currently I've had no problems and my uptime has been 100%. So that's cool. Jump into performance, for example. This is going to give you the stereotypical Google metrics that allow you to quickly see what your site is like on desktops and so on. The WordPress management is where you're probably going to spend most of your time, though. If we click on the WordPress management here, you can see this gives us a breakdown very similar to what you see inside the WordPress dashboard itself for all any updates available, what's active, inactive, and so on. So you can see that we currently have a couple of updates that are required for Elemental and SEO Press, and we've also got one for WordPress Core itself. So now we've seen we've got some updates to roll out. We can manage those updates directly inside here. So we can go into an individual site. Like you can see, we've got plugins here, and we can select any plugin or both plugins or all plugins or whatever you want. You can update them individually. You can update them from this bar at the bottom. You can also choose to activate, deactivate, or delete. So if you know you've got a plugin and you've installed it and you only use it when you're setting your sites up and you've forgotten to take it off, you can just use this dashboard to handle that side of things as well. For example, we simply want to run some updates. So let's choose the update option. We can now go through and say, what type of update do we want to do? Because we're doing this remotely, we want to have some level of safety baked into the process. So you got a quick update, a classic safe update, an advanced update. So this will then take it and do regression test it and make sure that your site looks the same and is the same between the two different versions and so on. So for this example, let's say we want to do an advanced safe update. You can choose manual validation, which they do recommend, or automatic rollback. What it'll do is this, if there's a problem, any glitch, it will automatically roll back to the previous version which was working. So it means that you don't have to worry. But it's always worthwhile making sure before you do any of this, you have backups in place. So before we run these updates, Let's quickly go and take a look at the backup option. So inside here, you can see we've got backups that are automatically being handled. We can also create manual backups. So if at this point you're thinking, right, I've got some updates, I'm concerned, I want to make sure that I've got a backup in place. If something goes wrong, I can restore that backup. You can create a manual backup here. So you can click Create Manual Backup. This will run us to a simple wizard that tells us how to do it. So we'll say, let's confirm we want to do this. So this will now go through the process of creating that backup and storing it on the WP Umbrella servers. We'll let that carry on running in the background. And let's take a look at the options you have for these backups. You can see we've got actions next to every single backup that we have. This gives us some information about the actual backup so we can see when this was done, what changes have been made between backups and so on. So you can see we've got 17 posts, seven pieces of media, three plugins, the WordPress version, and what theme is currently being used. And we click. You can restore the website, restore the database. You can download your full backups, delete it. You kind of get the idea of what you can do here. So you've got plenty of options for the backups that you create either manually or automatically. You've also got things like your content scheduler. So you can choose when you want to actually save these backups. You can also come in and choose what files or folders, database entries, and so on you may want to exclude. So you may have plugins, for example, that you don't want to actually back up. There could be things like, Security backups with lots of log files. It could be an analytics plugin you're running on your site, which again creates lots of log files and things. You could choose to exclude those so your backups are smaller with information that's going to be deleted over a short period of time anyway. So you can just open these up and choose them from a simple list of what you do or don't want to back up. So for example, you may say that you don't want to worry about your content folder. You can simply hit exclude and you can see that's excluded now onto the right hand side. When I put it back, click include. So you can see where I'm testing this, I've removed things like my cache, anything like that with backups and so on. I've taken that off here because I don't store backups on a site itself. They're always pushed off server. So that allows me to sort of set them, save my exclusions, job done. Same thing goes for your database. You can also set your schedule up for your backups then. So you can do hourly, daily, right the way through to only manual. Hop into your restoration settings and you can choose how you want to restore the backups using FTP, your database, and so on. Let's go back now to our WordPress management. Let's go and update these plugins. So we'll select these, hit update. We'll say we want advanced safe and we want manual validation. Hit update plugins. That's now going to go off and start that process. This is currently taking a screenshot and this is handle that sort of regression testing to make sure that everything is fine before and after. This helps you make sure that your backups are safe. So that's the plugins updated. Now we can head over to core and do the same thing. So we can say update WordPress. If you run in any kind of caching, just to make sure you don't get any kind of glitches between the updates, you can say, yep, clear the cache. 
and we'll update our WordPress core. So again, this is now telling us this action that it's gonna start the process. We can see the update process here. We can let that carry on doing its job. And after a few moments, that's now been updated and job is done. So we've seen how easy it is to handle things like checking your uptime monitoring, your performance testing, managing updates and so on, and backups. There's a couple of more things I wanna quickly show you inside here. So for example, your security, this is gonna give you an overview of your website, which you can then choose to scan it. This is gonna check for very common vulnerabilities, tell you what they are, and help you to actually rectify those problems. So as you can see, I've got a couple of issues on this site. My site is not indexable by search engines. It's a test site, I've disabled that option, but this has picked it up and told us it's a problem. And we've also got an inactive plugin, which generally you don't want from a security point of view. If you don't have a plugin activated, you're not using it, delete it, get rid of it. But as you can see, there's lots of things that have been passed, like the SSL protocol, we're up to date with version of WordPress, our PHP version, et cetera, et cetera. You can run this very quickly and see if you get any problems. Any PHP issues? Well, we know that everything is fine there, so let's monitor it. We can create reports and set those up to be automatically sent out on a schedule that we want. Not only with the detail about that, but if you are working with clients, it's good to be able to send them something if you have a maintenance plan that shows them how many backups, their performance, so if you're making tweaks to it and you see enhancements in their performance, you can show that. Lots of different things you can do. And you can customize the whole look and feel of the report so you can brand this how you want it to be branded. Let me give you an example of what one looks like. This is where you can easily customize it. Now, I've only very quickly just applied some colors and branding. You'd spend more time, I would spend more time. It's just to show you and demonstrate. Let's preview this template. This will put some kind of placeholder data inside there. So you can put your company branding, your company colors, and so on. And you can see this will now give us an overview of performance, uptime, and you can customize this. You can choose what you do and don't want to include. So this could be sent out to break things down, the traffic, the number of user sessions and so on. Nice visual way of doing it. More information about the traffic, the most viewed pages and so on. Again, this is just sample data. Performance and uptime, so you can check for uptime monitoring. Again, always good when you wanna show this to a client. So all these kinds of cool things are there, updates when they were carried out, the installed versions when they were updated and so on. You kind of get the idea of how this can work. This is a nice way, like I say, of keeping your clients up to date. And it's pretty much all automated. Once you've set it the way you want, connected the account that you want and the email, it'll handle it based upon the schedule you set up. Really simple. Now, an important aspect here is handling alerts. So if, for example, your website goes offline, there's an issue and so on, you need to be notified. So the uptime monitoring and things like that can notify who you specify. And again, you can connect this up to different users inside your team. So different people might be get, sort of get emails or contacted via email or Slack and so on based upon the actual alert itself. So you can see we've got a default notification. If we edit this, we can get some information about it. You can change the name from here. You can choose what information is being monitored. So you can see we've got our monitoring management with downtime, uptime confirmation, domain expiry, and so on, security management, backup and restoration. And if we've got an update management, if that has failed, we can be notified of that as well. Hit next. Now we can choose who will get this email or the Slack notification. So you can enable those options from here, apply it to a specific website or websites, or apply it to all websites. You may have a catch-all email address. You might be the only person, you might be technical support, whatever. It can all be done Then hit save and continue. And then any problems, they'll be notified based upon the criteria you set up inside there and what email or Slack account you wanna connect it to. So again, pretty simple. You can come into your teams and you can add team members from here. You can label things like I said, so you can see we've got client sites, personal sites, and you connect up what site is available and how they're organized. And your clients, you can add different clients inside here so you can set them as the recipient for those reports and so on. So WP Umbrella makes this whole process very, very simple. If you're a one-man band, this can be an absolute time saver. Even if you're part of a team and you wanna delegate various different tasks to different people, you can do that inside WP Umbrella. It handles all the core things you need to be dealing with. Updates, maintenance, security, backups, monitoring, all those kinds of good things are handled inside that one dashboard. So you can check this out for yourself. The link will be in the description down below. If you want to try it out, like I say, it's a 14-day no credit card trial. You can test it and find out if it's for you. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.